Hi, my name's Shel Steiner, I'm 14, I come from England and I live in Hull. I, su I support football, I support England in football and I like watching them in the World Cup. The reason I'm doing this is to see how Africans live and then they can see how we live because I feel the way they're living at the moment is not good enough because they shouldn't be living in little things like sheds and they don't get enough money to live. They have to fight for food every day and I believe that we've got a better off life than them and their life should just be the same as ours. Thank you. Hi, my name's Laura, I'm 14 and I go to Winnie and I'm from Hull. But hopefully one day I won't be living in Hull because my aspirations are like to travel the world. Um, and hopefully one day I'll come to like Africa and one of the countries in there and help out with the children because I like to work with children. But that's not what I want to do in my career. I want to be a graphics designer, but maybe if I get there one day I will be. But. I want to go to South Africa in four years' time to watch the World Cup because I love watching it in like pubs and that. And so I want to see what the real thing's like. Hi, I'm William Skerritt. I'm from Hull and I'm 14 years old. I go to Winifred Holtby School and I'm in year nine. When, I, when I'm older, I want to be a teacher, mostly studying geography, but I'd like to teach anything really. I just want to work with children. Um, I think it's really unfair how you're treated in Africa. Like, you don't get fresh water and food. You have to pay for it, and the only way you can get money is by working. But if we don't have a job, we get paid by the government. And we can, that practically that means we get money for nothing. Or we could work for it like you do as well. We can get a free education, um, free water from taps, and we also get loads of other three things, free things as well, like education and health. Hello, my name's Terry. And I'm Chris. Um, we both live in England, um, in Hull, and we go to the same school, Winifred Hull, but we both think that the Civil War in Africa was absolutely appalling, the way that two old soldiers had to fight and murder people. And the living situations of Africans I found, find disgusting and I think um, all the countries in the world should help out other countries in need. I think um, some of the Africans could have a chance in getting proper jobs if they had the chance. Because they are very talented. Hi, my name's Lewis, this is his name, and we both go to a Winifred Oakley school. Um, we're both in year, well, going into year 10, uh, week on Friday, and um, I'm doing a BTEC diploma in sport next year, as well as GC GCSE graphics and art. I'm doing a BTEC level 2 in art, a GCSE in PE, and a GCSE in graphics. Um, we think the school's alright. After school um, I go to a swimming club at Ennardale and um, I play for Skellables, a rugby club. I think school's sort of boring because there's too many restrictions on the lessons we do. We don't get enough freedom, like picking what we want to do. As well as the internet, all the internet sites are blocked on the internet and you can't go on anything, you can't even go on Google Images or out like that. We watched the video this morning about the people in Sierra Leone and we think it's terrible about the fact that they don't get any money off no one and they have to live in them conditions that they do. Yeah, and people go around here and getting money for not even having a job or working for it. They just sit in, they could just sit on the street all day and get money for it, whereas you lot work. So you're, you're better than them. It still amazes us that, that even in the conditions that they are in, they're still trying and a living and feed themselves and everything, look after each other. Thanks. And we also saw a video about a child soldier called Sidi Boo. When he was eight, had his loss taken away from his family and he had to carry an AK-47 to go kill people. All his family were killed and we think it's terrible how it happened and it should stop right now. And even after that he still manages to live in a small house and still manages to make a living and keep himself alive. Hi, I'm Rebecca Palmer, I'm 13 years old and I live in Hull and go to Winifred Alpha School. Hi, I'm Claire Cutts, I'm 14, I go to Winifred Alpha School and live on Kingswood Estate in Hull. 
Schools, okay, and I want to be a journalist when I'm older, involved with languages. Um, yeah, I think the school's pretty good and I'd like to be an actress when I get older. We're both involved in the same courses next year. Uh, we're both doing basic drama, Spanish and food. Yeah, we um, watched some films this morning and I thought it was really bad. It was just real different to the life that we have in England and that they have to fend for themselves and we've just got loads. We take so much for granted because we have everything and we complain about what we've got and you've got nothing. Yeah. It really opens your eyes to some of the, the things that you, you do take for granted. It's like little things that we have they don't have. Yeah. It's adorable. It must have been so hard for the, the young people that just had to go out there, were forced to go out there and be um, a soldier and it's it's not even nice for a grown man to do it, never mind a little child. It's just, it's wrong and it shouldn't, it shouldn't happen. And everyone dying around them and having to murder people. It's horrible. Hi, I'm James. And I'm Alex. We're both thought you didn't go to Winford Albury School. I don't like Winford Albury School very much. It bores me, but I like drama. So I'm doing it next year and I like music, so I'm doing that next year as well. I like drama as well, I'm doing that next year and I'm also doing history and electronics. We watched some videos this morning about Africa and it really shocked me how young the kids were and they were made to shoot other kids and it was just horrible. I didn't think it was right that little children had to go out and like catch fish just so they could eat. And we, they have to have a job every day just to find, just so they could pay for food and eat and we just get it normally and don't have to do out for it. They lived in shelters and it was like a little shed and real small and damp and we've just got houses and it's a real big difference. And if, if we get like bored we can just go watch TV or go on a computer game but they have to like go sing or something or go like out because they have nothing else to do. Hi I'm Steph. I'm Stephanie Gilbert, people call me Steph. I go to Winifred for Doctor School. I live in Hope and Benjamin State. Um, my name is Paige Smith and I go to the same school as Steph. Um, uh, I'm in year 10 and I live in Hope, but I live on Leeds Road. Um, my personal hope is to, be, to work with children when I'm older. My um, personal hope is to be a photographer or something to do with art. Um, our community hope is to stop racism and to get more children involved in after school activities. Our um, national hope is for, um, to have more respect for our country and to um, make the streets safer and clean them up more. Our international hope is to stop wars and um, let countries work together instead of fighting against each other. Um, we admire people who have been through a lot of drama through their life but still manage to live a nice life and that makes us grateful. We watched some videos this morning of people in Sierra Leone and it makes us grateful of what we've got because we realise that they don't have much and they've been through a lot in their lives and it's not a very good thing to go through. We, we um, are really lucky for our lives because we have a nice home, we have friends, we have family and some people must be in there, must have nobody really and just have to live that life because they're forced to. There was a boy who had to live with another family and went asking for jobs and it was because he was a child soldier, it was like he was looked down on and it was not a very nice thing to go through. Hi, I'm Becky Lothorpe, I'm 14, I go to Winford Hop School and I'm in year 10. I live in East Hull on Bransom State. When I grew up I'd like to be a language translator. My favourite lessons at school are Spanish and PE. I like PE because you can have fun with your friends while doing something serious, exercising. The Spanish is fun because you're learning another language in which other people have to speak. I always think about the stuff I have in which I don't like and then I think about the people who are at a disadvantage to us and then I'm grateful for what I have. It was a bit bad this morning when we saw the films and how you people have to live where you have to go out before school and try and catch some breakfast and then if you have anything left you sell it for, for, for money. Whereas we, we just get up and we only just have enough time to get ready and then go to school. It's hard on you. 
because you have been so much, been so, through so much in which we haven't. You have a lot of experiences whether you wanted them or not, whereas we wouldn't want them and we haven't got them. I was shocked when I found out that you have to pay for your education. We get ours free and it's good because we don't have to worry about the fees in which we have to pay. We are able to go through school getting a good education and have fun without worrying about the money we have to pay for being there. Whereas you have to pay the money to go to school. You have to go like from door to door asking for jobs whether you get paid for them or not. Whereas we get money whether we have a job, uh, have a job or not. And it doesn't really seem fair. Aya, this is Chelsea. And this is Laura. And we're both 14 and we're from Hull. And we're just going to basically chat about what we do at a weekend, on a night, what it's like to live on Bransom and Hull and places like that. So I live on Sutton Park, Laura lives on Kingswood and we're very happy where we live. Um, the places where we live are a nice area, the kids are nice. And what do you have to say about this? Well, basically I think sometimes there's a lot of litter and that and it's a bit polluted in the area because it's real industrial and all. But apart from that, it's a good life. When we, we like out sometimes on the night with my mates on the streets, or we'll go bowling, or we'll go to cinemas and watch the movies and stuff like that. So it can be fun sometimes. I think the little thing is a big problem because we do have bins to use, but people just don't seem to use them. Because some people in some countries don't have bins, and they're just they'd be grateful for like a bin to put rubbish in. But we do have bins, but people just too lazy to use them. We're very goodly educated. <laughs> And we like school. Sometimes it can be boring, but yeah, I think most people from us like take advantage of what we get. Basically, from like other people said, things we get free like healthcare, education, water. We, yeah, we take advantage of that sometimes. Like, and when we think about countries like Africa and Sierra Leone, where you don't get an out, basically, you have to work for like not a lot of money really and, and then like when you see how they're being brought up and then yeah. how we've been brought up like they've had a bad upbringing but we've had a good upbringing because of things that happened in their country at the time yeah like the civil war which was real horrific when we found out about that hi i'm Josh turner this is mr Dosso. i'm here to ask him some questions about racism today how is life different in england to what it is in africa um, well, the only difference is the extended family relations. In Africa, I've got extended family relations, um, cousins, brothers taking more care of each other than it is here um, um, in England. We've got only father, um, mother, brother, and sister. That's the only difference. Um, apart from that, um, I can mention the technological advancement in England. Um, you are more advanced in technology than, than it is in Africa. Have you ever experienced racism? And if you have, how did you deal with it? Right. Um, yes, um, I have experienced racism. But in my case, it's only, well, I'll call it a minor one. Um, it was only a child, um, one of my students, who made a comment that was the racist comment. But I thought I was a child, he didn't know what he was doing. You know, only needs exposure to, to go over things like that. So, um, how it was, their way was really, really fantastic. I didn't want people to get involved. It was only one of the kids who went out and, and informed um, a staff member that a child said that. And I said, No, come on, leave, leave the boy alone. He said, No, no, no we've, we've got to take this up. So, no, it's all right. This child needs some correction. And then um, they came back to me and said, No, the child is being sent home. And I said, No. Um, I think two days later, they came back to me and said, well, this child is back. And I've got Becky back with me in my lesson. She's like, she did fantastic. She said, oh, say, I'm sorry for all I did. I didn't know. I said, fine. We are getting on very well. It's only a matter of exposure with people. Yeah. Are you happy here in England? Um, Chelsea, I'm very happy in, in England. Um, it's, it's brilliant. We've got lovely people. Great stuff, especially in, in Winfrey Holby, where you've got supportive staff um, right from the head to 
kitchen staff and everybody. In fact, I, I can't believe it. I feel at home. I, I call this place my home. It, it's great. Very happy. Where are you originally from and when did you come to England? Um, originally, I'm from Ghana. Um, I, I, came, I came to England in 2003, um, October 2003, um, and I've been here since then, it's about three years now. Um, I, I, I trained in Ghana as a teacher, I didn't train in England, um, so there are a bit, a bit, a bit of differences um, in terms of class management and class control and things like that. In Ghana, where you're allowed to, to do certain things in the classroom, you're not allowed here. Um, so there's a, <laughs> that's a bit of a difference, <laughs> really. Um, well, in Ghana, we, we, used, we used to use the, um, the cane, um, where corporal punishment is allowed in the classroom. Um, it's not been um, pushed down to the, the head teacher and senior staff really who can only do Kenny and um, not, not, not the teachers can do Kenny again in Ghana so that, that is still there but teachers can do it except head teachers and, and senior management staff thank you very much for your honest interview sir it's a pleasure sir. thank you You're welcome thank you Hi, I'm Charles Turner and this is Mr Little, the headmaster of Winifred Opera School, Technology College. I'm here today to ask him some questions about racism, bullying and behaviour. Do you think the behaviour in the school is acceptable at the moment? At the moment I think the behaviour is adequate in the school. Compared to what it was like when I arrived two years ago, I certainly think it's improved. I'm not necessarily the best person to ask because obviously you need to ask the students who've been here for a long time and also the members of staff who are currently here. There are still issues but we're working on them. What do you feel about the racism around school? I think the racism within the school is extremely limited. Uh, where situations do arise, they are dealt with very, very quickly. And there's a certain perception that ch children currently don't have about whether a comment they make is racist or not. Uh, anything that is said that is inappropriate is dealt with on an individual basis. What plans do you have around the school to reduce bullying, racism and behaviour around the school? Currently we have a, a, a group of staff who are meeting on a regular basis to discuss the issues of behaviour and bullying in the school and how possibly we can move forward to reduce it even further. But it's not just about the staff voice, we also need to hear from the students what they think, their perceptions and how they think we could actually improve the standards in future years. Pause. Do you feel you've turned the school around? Again, you're probably asking the, the, the wrong person. It, it, it's a need to ask the students whether they think the school has improved or not. If anything, I feel that I've, I've given a, a direction to the staff and the children within the school about how we need to improve things, how we need to get the teaching and learning right, how we need to develop your understanding of your learning and also for you to be successful. Um, we're certainly turning the curve, but there's an awful long way to go. But we can only do it if we work in collaboration with yourselves, parents and carers. Are you pleased to be here at Winford Up School? I'm, ex sorry. I'm extremely <laughs> pleased to be here. Uh, I came here for my first headship and I've enjoyed every minute of it. Politician went to scoff themselves All them suck from the post of a rose Of my land Hi, my name is Laura Peterson and I'm sat here with Miss Navin, who's a graphics teacher. And I'm going to interview her for the next three minutes. So, what advice would you give to a student who wants to build a career in graphics design? Right, well, if I'd basically just tell you the route I went down, did my GCSEs, did my A levels in fine art, and then went to university for three years. Um, and then went obviously into teaching but my degree was in graphic products which leaves it entirely open for you to go into whatever area of art you want to go into so that's probably the best way to go into it. So what excites you about graphics? Did you like art at school? Or? 
Right, well the way, the reason I got involved in doing art was because I'm quite badly dyslexic, which means that um, I'm not very good at writing things down or expressing myself through um, writing and literacy and numeracy. Um, so I found art was a really good way of expressing myself and it didn't involve doing any exams. It was quite easy to get into, it was enjoyable, so I think uh, that's why I, why I found myself getting involved in art. How did you become a graphics teacher or Right, well up until the last year of my degree I had no desire to become a teacher at all. Um, and there was a poster put up at the, in the union at my university um, for anybody who was the first person in their family to go to university could come and have a look around different schools in Hull. Um, as a way of encouraging students to become teachers so I thought um, that would be quite interesting so I started doing that and I came in and sat with a, a member of staff just one day a week really really enjoyed it and then it all it all led on from there came into school got a job here did my training here and, and then qualified so that's that's the way I, I went about it but I had no desire up until that last year to get into teaching just fell into it more or less do you enjoy teaching the students here at Winifred Holtby? I massively enjoy teaching the children at Winifred Holtby, the students at Winifred Holtby. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, it, is pro it is without a doubt the best job I've ever done. I absolutely love it. Um, and there's no chance of ever being miserable while you're working with children and young adults. Hello, my name is Philip McLennan and I'm going to be interviewing Mr Wilkinson today. Um, basically just want to become an actor when I'm older. So, just interview Mr Wilkinson. Hello Mr Wilkinson. Hello Philip. So, what should I do to become an actor? Well, first of all you made the right choice um, going into year 10 because you're doing BTEC, aren't you? Yeah, BTEC. Which is one of the best choices because you'll get a better overall picture of what you need to be doing before you go to college. Um, as far as school's concerned, that's the best thing you can do. The only other things you can do is to do extra extra classes outside of school, yeah. which I can help you with whenever you need to ask me. Um, but as far as inside school, qualification-wise, just keep doing your BTEC. Um, we may have online next year fast-track GCSE, so you could leave with five GCSEs in drama. Yeah. So, where would I go to become an actor as I get an, act an acting job? Well, after university or after oh, school? Basically, where would I go from school to? Well, <clears throat> your best option is to, I think, seeing as you, you're doing the BTEC, say you passed that successfully, one of the things you might look at doing, there's two options, you may want to go on to college and study further and do A levels, or you may want to look at auditioning for a drama school straight away and leaving and going to a drama school at 16, which is what I did, and then you would do three years at a drama school. So you have two options there. One route is to go to college, do A levels, or go straight to a drama school should you get an audition and get in and do a, a, um, a professional drama uh, course at a uh, professional drama school. Yeah. And where would I go when, if I passed them successfully? What if you did? Or get a proper job as an actor. Right. After that, the first thing <coughs> excuse me, you would start doing is once you were at university. Um, or a, a proper drama school, you'd need to start looking at um, where you would want to move to, what's the best cities that offer the best opportunities for the line of work you want to do. Um, and that generally is now major cities like um, London and Birmingham. So you'd have to look at moving there, you'd have to look at getting yourself an agent, because the only way you find out about like, a majority of jobs is through an agent. They will send you on auditions, you get the auditions, you do the jobs, and then you keep doing that until your name's good enough that they start calling you. Well, thank you for talking to me. You're welcome, Philip. Good luck. Thanks. See you Thanks. next year.
I'd like to become a musician in the future, how would I go about that? Uh, to be a musician you need to be dedicated, you need to work hard at school. It uh, makes sense to do well in English, Maths and Science um, in order to get into the right courses if you're considering going further into college after school. Um, at Winifred Holtby we actually run a BTEC music course and GCSE. Now the BTEC is vocational, you look at the, B, uh, the uh, work aspects of the course. Um, you need to practice a lot. Uh, I believe that you play guitar and piano yourself, so it takes a lot of time to practice. Practicing every day and getting yourself known, playing on the stage, and uh, that would help you become a musician. What courses would I need to take in year 10? Uh, well, we've got BTEC Music and we've also got GCSE Music. BTEC's more of a vocational subject and you get to go to Hull College and work in their recording studio and produce music videos and there's more performing actually on that course. The GCSE course is also a very good course but it's slightly more, um, you've got your composing, listening and there's a lot of sit down exams. BTEC course you continually assess throughout the course and there's no exam at the end of it. Um, they link very nicely to go to, off to college or university, both of those courses to study music. Would I have to go to college and university and what qualifications would I need? Uh, you don't have to go to college or university, a lot of people just uh, actually play for fun and do manage to get quite far in their music careers. However, I have known students in the past who've um, done GCSE music and then gone on to study at Leeds College of Music and just concentrated on performance when they've gone to college. Uh, you can choose to specialise more in what you enjoy and the style of music that you enjoy when you go to college. Personally, I went to university and did a classical music degree, but now I play for fun and I'm interested in jazz music. So there's a lot of um, choices. If you want to do a music degree, or you can do HMDs or BTECs at college for the BTEC course that you're going to be doing here. Will it take hard work and how long will it take to do different courses? Uh, a course is as difficult or as easy as you make it. If you put in the effort, you get the result you deserve at the end of it. People who work hard genuinely do better and manage to get on to college. Uh, what was in the past of the question? How long will it take to do the different courses? Uh, BTEC music takes two years at school. Um, it involves 300 hours of study. The GCSE requires 60 hours of study over the course of two years. If you wanted to go on to college or university, a normal degree takes three years. And then you could choose to do a master's degree after that for a year. Um, I'm Kurt and this is Ms. Warns. Um, thank you for the interview. Thank you very much and good luck. We're now interviewing Mr. Ursley and um, we're going to ask him some questions about how he got into languages. So, how did you actually get into languages? Well, I actually started, I come to school at Winifred Holtby where I studied Spanish here um, and I really liked it and I got an A in my, in my GCSE to Winifred Holtby in, in Spanish. And I went to White College where I studied Spanish at A-level. And I really liked it there, but I found it really hard. And I really struggled at A-level with Spanish. But then I thought, well, I want to take it as far as I can. So I went to university in Leeds where I studied Spanish with media. Um, and when I was at uni, that's when I really got into it. We got going with my languages. And the best part of studying language, I thought, was when I went to Spain for a year. I went to Spain to work as an English language assistant working over there, helping the children speak English, but learning Spanish at the same time. It was in a little town in Spain called Villa Hoyosa, and I just worked and lived with the people, and that's how my Spanish really clicked and came along, and that's how I really got interested in it. And it was then on that I learned that that's what I wanted to do, and I wanted to teach Spanish. So what excites you about languages? What excites me, I think it is a very exciting subject, it's a different subject, um, I th feel that it gives people so many opportunities to travel around the world, you know, learn different cultures, learn about different countries, um, you know, people don't realise that with a language you've got so much opportunity to, you know, work in so many different places. So, what advice would you give for a student that would like to become, like, a language translator? 
Well, I think follow a similar path to what I did. Um, a levels, a degree would be excellent because that's when you can take you know your language further. But ideally, go and learn the language in that country and spend time in the country speaking with the people and learning about the language in a real life situation. You know, in reality, and just take it as far as you can. Um, you know, if you can study other languages as well, it always helps because people are interested in French, Spanish, German as well. But, you know, like I said, go to university, get your degree and, you know, go to the country. I don't like that. <laughs> What type of qualifications will I need for, to become a marine biologist? Marine biologist, um, it's a great thing to be. You would need to finish school here with um, good GCSEs in as many subjects as you can and then to sixth form to do um, A-level science of some kind, possibly biology. That would be where you're most interested. And from there to university to do um, a biology or a zoology degree. Um, you could even uh, think about chemistry because there's a lot of chemistry involved with studying the oceans, even physics. Um, marine biology covers a huge range of uh, scientific topics, but it would, it would need to be basic science, A level, and then a university degree. What type of work would I be doing as a marine biologist? Well, as the name suggests, you'd be studying the. Um, the sea, the oceans, the whole environment. And lots of people have interest in uh, the oceans uh, of the planet at the moment, whether it's um, studying fish stocks, um, farming at sea is a, an increasingly interesting area, so you might be involved with the fishing industry. It might be the studying um, things like problems caused by pollution. Oil companies are interested in that. So you'd be out. Um, it's an, very much an outdoor job. You'd be measuring, taking samples, catching specimens. You might get to do um, uh, underwater swimming. You could be sampling the seabed. Uh, it's a very active kind of job. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you'd need to be um, skilled in things like computing. A lot of uh, people who do research now get computers to uh, do all their calculations, make their graphs and even write their reports. So you'd need uh, good IT skills as well. It sounds uh, a brilliant job, wish I'd chosen it. What interests you to become a science teacher? I was always interested in um, how things worked, whether it was uh, TV sets and radios or cars or plants and animals. I just wanted to know why things were the way they are and how they worked. And that got me interested in science. And it actually wasn't the best thing that I did at school. I was more interested uh, better at um, English and foreign languages. But I wasn't interested in that. I was interested in science. So that's why I took up science. And I would say to anybody, don't just stick to what you're good at. Uh, if you're interested in something and you really want to do it, that's the best thing for you to do. And if you're interested in marine biology, go for it. This is Mr Liddell, we're going to be asking him questions about the community. Do you think we should have more activities to help the community? I certainly think we should have more activities to help the community. Um, currently the government are asking schools to become more community focused and if and when the school is rebuilt in five years time one would hope that we will be the focus of a lot of things that go on around Bransholm. How safe do you think the streets are and how and why? I think the streets are as safe now as they ever were before. I think because uh, in this day and age people highlight issues that are going on. People think there's a change with society and that uh, perhaps adults or children aren't doing what they should be doing. But when I look back at it, it's probably very, very similar when I was a child. It's dependent on where you live, it depends on the people around you and the culture in which you, you actually exist in. How do you think the school has a positive impact on the community? We try very hard to teach the children about uh, social and moral values and we try and engender that in them from the age of 11 onwards. As you know yourselves, you have your, your PSHE lessons where you talk about social aspects of life. So we work with you to try and get people to understand their moral responsibilities in society today.
Thank you. Thank you. We're gonna keep shaking. <laughs>